What did you do when Bandai didn't make all the original Mighty Morphin Power Ranger helmets and swords? You go ahead and you make your own. That's what you do. What's going on everyone? Will at Heroic Studios. Thank you guys for visiting my channel again. Now, I'm a huge Power Rangers fan. I think that's pretty evident by my wall that you saw in the opening scene. Now, when Hasbro bought the rights from Bandai, I was kind of bummed because Bandai was actually on a roll with their Legacy Collection. I think I had pretty much everything regarding their Legacy line, and I was looking forward to them actually making the rest of the Power Ranger helmets. Unfortunately, that didn't come to fruition, and I was kind of bummed. Now, I know Hasbro actually released their Pink Ranger helmet, but I have the White Ranger helmet from Hasbro, and I'm not really a fan about it. So, what I've decided to do is start a video series documenting my build on the rest of the original Mighty Morphin Power Ranger helmets, as well as their respective weapons. And today, I'm going to walk you through how to build these. That's right, these are the exact replica of the Yellow Ranger power daggers actually i don't know if these are exact these are kind of big as you might know but i had a lot of fun making these and i'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to make your weapons look fantastic also i'm going to run you through the do's and don'ts and make and give you guys a little bit more advice on what you can do to make these a little bit better these are they're good on the outside but on the inside they're not the greatest so without further ado let's get into it Okay, well just like everything else we need to do before we start getting to building stuff is that we need to get the file. So this is the file that I use. It is from CG Trader. It is $3, but it is, you have to pay for it. Big whoop, $3, there's three McChickens at McDonald's you'll miss out on. Who cares? Now this file is um, the only one file that I found. There was another one on GrabCat, but I looked just now and for some reason it's no longer. There. So I guess the creator might have taken it down. Um, good thing I did because the Power Axe and the Power Lance, I got those from GrabCat and I got those downloaded all together. So this was the only one that wasn't from GrabCat. So um, go ahead and get this file. But before you do, I have to point out that there are some serious issues with this file. So if you go through it here, um, the whole put together file, this thing has a lot of tolerance issues, a lot of the parts do not fit together properly. So you're gonna find yourself having to either remove material or sand things down in order for these things to fit properly. For example, this little uh, piece right here that fits into the shaft that connects the whole entire body of the blade, of the dagger, I mean, um, doesn't quite fit snugly in here. And you, you're either gonna have to get a mallet and wham it in there, or you're gonna have to sand this down in order for this to uh, fit in there nice and snug. Another issue that I found was that these fangs that are on either side are supposed to fit into these caps right here. They don't fit properly either. So that became a problem and I had to do a lot of finessing and sanding to get these fangs to fit in here. Another thing is that the casings here, they come with these little notches and I'm going to go over this later on in the video. I'm going to show you what I mean. They come with these pegs that are supposed to fit inside the holes on um, the opposite side. Those don't fit inside the holes as well as those little pegs do end up breaking off if you are a little bit too aggressive with removing it from your print bed. Kind of annoying, I know, but that's easily fixable. Just put some glue on either side, sandwich them together. But then the oblong caps here, they're not exactly the same, which I don't know why this designer didn't make them exactly the same, but one is more of an oval shape, the other one is more of a circle shape. I guess he did that as a means to dummy proof it so you don't get confused on which one goes where, right or left, left to right. Um, but because of that, this doesn't sandwich everything down completely either. There's no tolerance between this part and the curvature of these little caps. So you're gonna have to do a lot of forcing in, a lot of uh, sanding down and make these things work. It was a pain in the ass, but if you're willing really to tough through it, hey, I did and they came out great. So. Um, to get started, go ahead and just get this file. It is three dollars on CG Trader. You do have to make an account, but if you make an account right off the bat, I think you get like twenty percent off. So what's that like a dollar, dollar or something like that? I don't know. I'm not good at math. Actually, I'm very good at math. I, I'm just really tired at the moment. Um, so go ahead and get this file, and I'm going to show you exactly how I put everything on my print bed and how we got everything going. Cool. All right, so here we are in Simplify 3D. I am using my Artillery Sidewinder. So if you are not familiar with this printer, it's roughly the size of an Ender 3. It might be a little bit bigger though. I was able to fit all the parts on here 
um, to go in one go. Now, you know, if you have been doing this a long time, you know, rule of thumb is that you don't try to do a lot of parts on one bed at once. You want to kind of do maybe the shaft here by itself or maybe the daggers by itself. I wanted to get this project done, so I bit the bullet and it did bite back. So there were a few parts that failed that I had to create replacement parts for, but it's all good. Majority of this whole print bed uh, ended up becoming uh, fairly, fairly, um, they, they survived, that's what I'm trying to say. Again, guys, I'm tired. It is midnight where I'm at and I'm recording this with no coffee, but I'm having a drink, so yeah. So I wanted to show you guys these little parts right here, the CD and then CL, which are, uh, CI, I'm sorry, which is these little caps, which is, I, the person who made it is from a Spanish-speaking country, so this is Cap Derecho, and then the other one is Esquireda. I think I pronounced that right. These are left and right caps, and you can see that they're, one is more circular than the other. So you're going to have to go ahead and left and right, figure out which one goes where, but usually the cutouts on these, um, the, the, the embosses here or the, the carve-outs match the shape. Problem is that there's no tolerance there. There's no tolerance. So these things don't fit like they should, unfortunately. Like I said, here are these pegs right here that fit into one, two, three, four. But these pegs are extremely flimsy. So if you plan on trying to mash these in there, be very careful because these do break off very easily. But um, honestly speaking, from working with this thing twice, because I built two daggers, um, I don't even think these pegs are going to fit in here anyway. So you're probably better off just tearing these off and using glue to kind of sandwich this all together. This shaft right here, I have no idea what this part is for. It just showed up in the, in the build. Um, I don't know what this means, so if anybody who's watching this knows what this means, let me know, but I put the daggers together perfectly fine, and I didn't find any need for this part right here. So this is how I have it arranged on my bed. Again, I'm using my Artillery Sidewinder X1, um, roughly the size of an Ender 3. Uh, you can go ahead and put all the parts on there. It saves you time, but I think let's go ahead and see how long it's going to take. If I remember correctly, I think this thing took a roughly about a little over a day to print and I'm printing at a 0.2 layer height. And that's actually pretty medium for most people. Um, this is actually a pain in the ass when it comes to sending. So yeah, this is about 35 hours. You're looking at close to damn near a day and a half. So, um, let it run. That's what I did. And it, everything turned out okay. So I'm not really complaining about it. But if you want to do it in parts, go right ahead. So that is perfectly up to you. So let's move on. Okay, so one of the pros of getting this file, despite all of its tolerance issues, is the ability to print the power coin separate. Now I went ahead and took the power coin and put it in Cheetu box because from the get-go, I wanted to resin print these coins because I have this really special gold paint that I wanted to try. And honestly, I've never really painted resin before, like how I do FDM prints. So this was actually the first time that I wanted to kind of try that out to see how the resin took the paint. And I was really impressed uh, by how this this cold, this cold coin looks actually fairly real, like a really live gold coin, even though it's resin. So I went ahead and I'm using my Mars 2 Pro and I'm putting four coins on here because two daggers require two, uh, one dagger requires two coins, so four coins all together. And this, if you ever done any resin printing before, it's fairly simple. I went ahead and I hollowed these out. Um, I think I have, if I remember correctly, a point, 2.2 .2 millimeter wall thickness, which is fairly okay. Helps you save resin. You don't have to hollow them out, but Sometimes if you're using a solid model, then the suction, when the build plate comes up, creates a lot of issues and sometimes your print may fail. So hollowing it out kind of helps that process uh, work a bit better. So I added my support. So if I slice this right now, uh, let's see how long it's going to take. We're looking at about an hour, 20 minutes to print these cool coins. And this is kind of like the finishing touches on uh, this particular project the coin is it looks fantastic when you finally get it spray painted it looks good and i'm, I'm actually fairly impressed um with my first painted printed resin coin that goes into my dagger that makes the dagger look cool yeah man all right well let's get to the build let's get to the printing and the build and we're going to see how everything uh works out all right we are on our way to making the first dagger this thing is going 
really slow so I can lay down a pretty decent first layer after replacing this motor right here. I don't want to compromise anything here. So I put the first layer settings at about 25% of the entire speed and it has been going good ever since. We are not even at a percent here yet. So let's go. All right, so we had a little issue right here. I probably have to deal with uh, some adhesion problems right there, but I'm just gonna leave that alone and let it finish up. But the rest of this looks pretty cool. The dagger blades, oh, I don't know if you guys can see that. Nope, nope. The daggers, which are here, look like they just finished up, so that looks cool. So, yeah. Everything looks like it's going according to plan, but we're not even at the 50% halfway mark, so we still got a lot to go. Alright, so this dagger just got done printing. Now, not all of it is here. There are some parts that did not survive um, the whole entire bed. So, I guess this is the reason why you print them in spurts. Like, you don't put all the pieces on the bed if you can avoid it. So, a lot of these pieces are being replaced, like this part here, sorry, this part here, um, there was a tolerance issue where these pegs were supposed to fit into the holes here and it's not working. So I'm not going to I'm not going to reprint those parts because I can simply just glue these two together and then you're good. Um, but like the shaft here, this is actually a part that goes into the main handle. This is actually too big and the tolerance here is kind of wonky, but I think I can manage that to uh, keep that going. Um, the other things that kind of broke were like these, uh, these are called fangs and they kind of hang out on the side here with this little notch here, but this the second notch didn't make it. So, um, this is actually for the right and the other one's for the left and this fang kind of fits in here and it kind of crawls forward. But all in all, I'm really excited that this part right here, this is actually a threaded piece that was able to be printed and it threads onto this part here. So that's actually pretty cool. But the size and scope of the actual dagger, so I'm going to pick it up for you guys. Just one half of it. This thing is massive. It is really big for what it is and I'm really excited to finish it. But remember, I got to print two of these because, you know, the Yellow Ranger had two. So I'm really excited. This is just my little guilty project, I suppose. But yeah. Um, I'm fairly impressed with how this turned out. No doubt. And we have the second dagger underway. I'm printing it in white because I'm just about out of black, so doesn't matter. It's going to be painted anyway, but this uh, first layer is looking really good so far. Here's the first layer, or the first dagger, sorry. Not bad. Got to do some sanding, but uh, better get them all printed out and then we'll do all the cosmetic and fine tuning afterwards. Alright, so these daggers are just about finished. Actually, I lied. This is only at 40 something percent, 44, not even halfway, and it's been printing literally since last night. So I probably won't see this done probably until early afternoon tomorrow. But it's doing its thing. I think I'm going to run out of filament before that happens, though, unfortunately. But yeah, let's see how this works out. Oh boy, I can tell you guys right now, sanding down these things is not fun. This is just one dagger. I got a whole other dagger to do. But I was able to use some of the Bondo, which is that stuff right there, to pretty much get all the print lines down because I printed at a higher layer. So, uh, it's time to scratch these things down and splash them up, see what they look like. Oh man, I'm making such a mess. All right, well, so if you watch Power Rangers back in the 90s, you only really got a look at their weapons when they were putting together the power cannon. Now, if you watch the Japanese Sentai, which a lot of us have already done, you get more of their weapon action. So it was really fascinating to me when I started building Trini's daggers um, what they actually look like because they don't really tell you or really show you much in the American dub when you're a kid. I mean, the power sword is pretty much self-evident. You can kind of see that, but you don't really see any of the other ones like the power lance or the power daggers, which are my two favorite weapons because they weren't really shown 
as much. So when I was on a hunt to find Trini's daggers, um, I wanted to know exactly what they look like and exactly what they consisted of. So these things, um, and excuse, this is the footage from the American one. These things have two fangs on the side along with a blade and of course a shaft where you are supposed to hold it. So uh, my dagger is a little bit bigger, but they kind of fit the mold. So now we go into painting and painting is actually the fun part of all this. I know a lot of people kind of like want to get to the step a little bit faster, but it is what it is. For the blade, I used this Kryleon dark metal paint and it looks fantastic. For the shaft, I used a meta, uh, yellow. Now with this, the yellow paint was hard to find because of all the supply shortages and all that stuff. I couldn't really get my hands on any good yellow, but I did find some Montana gold yellow um, and that worked out really well. It just, it wasn't very accurate when it came to spraying. Now with the painting, you gotta be very careful. You gotta make sure you do your sanding. And this is one of the mistakes that I've done because I'm very impatient when it comes to doing projects. You have to make sure that you do your best at sanding. Otherwise you're gonna get print lines to show. Now I had to go back numerous times and replace some of the parts with some filler putty, like the Bondo that I'm using. Um, and it was a pain in the ass. And especially when you have to do two daggers that have close to about 10 pieces, it's kind of a tedious kind of gig. So it's better that you do it right the first time so you don't have to go and backtrack over and over again trying to figure out what it is you're trying to do. The yellow on this, I, I, I wasn't a fan of the Montana black yellow. I, I didn't really like it. The, the nozzle in which you sprayed, it didn't really give you a precise precision accuracy spray. So it kind of just sprayed everywhere. And so a lot of the parts that I had on the uh, box ended up being sprayed again. And I didn't really like that. With this particular part though, you can still see the print lines on this shaft and it's kind of a pain in the ass. So I went back and I filled all the cracks with Bondo in order to make it look nice. You can go ahead and try and resin print these parts. If you have a, a Elegoo Saturn, or a full-time Mono X, you can try and take these parts and see if it fits on a print bed. I'm pretty sure that they will. It'll help eliminate some of the imperfections that you have with this particular model, okay? Um, again, the tolerance issues were a, a big problem. A lot of the parts never really fit together um, and you had to do a lot of sanding down to get them to fit together. And you can kind of see right here what I'm talking about, especially with the fangs that go inside of this cap right here. Now for the finishing touches, I wanted to resin print the coin. So this is probably by far the easiest part of the entire build. I resin printed the coins on my Elegoo Mars 2 Pro, Mars Pro 2, 2 Pro, Mars Pro 2. I like calling it that, it's better. And I hit it with a white primer and then I did it again with a silver primer to kind of give it that sheen. And then I hit it with a Montana black gold, which has just been so fantastic um, ever since I started using this stuff. This stuff is amazing. It makes it look like it's metal and the coins look great. A little issue with the coins though, again, tolerance problems, they don't quite fit in the notch. So it's kind of a pain in the ass. You kind of have to push it in until it snaps. The good news is once, it, once it's in there, it's not coming out. It's snug in there. I thought I would have to have glued these coins in there or, any, or something like that. But once you get them in there, you're not going to get them out. So, um, yeah, have fun with that. But make sure you do uh, be prepared for that. So let's go into the evaluation part. Let's see how big these daggers really are. Now, the overall length of these daggers is about 22 inches. Now, keep in mind, I didn't scale up or scale down any of the parts. I took what was there and put it on my bed. Feel free to scale up and down your parts. That's entirely up to you. Now there's been some debate on the, the handle of the uh, actual daggers needing to be painted black. I've seen tons of variations that don't do that. That's entirely up to you. If you want to do that, go for it. All in all, these daggers feel great. They feel lightweight and easy to handle in my hands. They're perfect for cosplaying, and these were a fun project to do. Now, keep in mind, they, these are, they did have tolerance issues. So if you can get past the tolerance issues, you will have, in no doubt in my mind, a very fun time making these daggers work for you. So I hope this video did help you guys. And that'll do it for this episode, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this build make you a better 3D printer. And I hope you guys do take a stab 
at printing these daggers. Now these daggers have a lot of issues with them as I explained in the video, so maybe if you are rocking an Elegu Saturn or bigger, maybe try resin printing these. I know that the daggers here, the blades, as well as the shaft, might fit on the resin printer. I know that might be a next experiment that I do to see if I can get these working a little bit better. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with what with how these came out. I really don't have any complaints, so I hope this video was a little bit more helpful for you. So, uh, subscribe yeah, button, share guys, it with your friends. If you're a Mighty Morphin Power Ranger fans like me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I'm coming at you with more videos with more awesome Mighty Morphin Power Ranger builds. I have the Black Rangers Power Axe on deck right now. I have two more parts to print, and then I'm going to show you guys exactly how to make that one. So thank you guys for watching. Also, a very special shout out to everybody who's followed me on TikTok. I just broke a thousand followers, which is unheard of because... I don't really use TikTok, nor am I a fan, but it does help me tell you what it is I'm working on, just like these daggers. So if you haven't followed me yet on TikTok, check it out. You can find me over at Heroic Studios Pops and Props and Prints. You can also find the link in the description and follow me there. And follow me everywhere else. I got Instagram, Facebook. Um, yeah, just go ahead and do that. Great seeing you guys. I hope to see you guys next time on another build, and I will catch you guys later. Take care.